Uh, continuing on with the SimH series, I'm um, going to start messing around with OpenVMS. Um, this is going to be the, the first video uh, for OpenVMS. This is really just configuring the emulator and getting the basic installation done. We'll do some other videos for uh, some of the other stuff. So let's get started with the uh, configuration file. So, first thing to do, tell it uh, memory. This is going to be for a VAX, so give it a half gig. Um, VAX had a full 32-bit address space. It used really complex paging. Uh, not necessarily complex, but it was really advanced at the time. Uh, so, VAX, again, stands for Virtual Address Extension. So, it could address you know, 4 gigs of memory, full 32-bit address space. And this was in what, the mid to late 70s, so pretty impressive stuff. Uh, let's get our non-volatile RAM. Uh, let's get a disk. Um, RQ0. Uh, make it a 5 gig disk. Again, I love to use the RA user. I forget what all the deck devices are. Like, what's an RA, you know, 70. Yeah, uh, what all the different sizes are. So, give it a file. Uh... Let's uh, say three is an is a CD-ROM. Let's give that uh, path to the installation ISO. Now, OpenVMS is available for for hobbyists in what they call the OpenVMS Hobbyist Program. Um, I'll throw a link to kind of the website describing all the stuff. Basically, you have to be a member of a users group or an organization. You can get a license. Uh, for kind of hobbyist, non-commercial use. Great program. Wish more companies would do this for their, you know, their enterprise software that people may want to use, um, you know, at home to learn about, to maintain the history, uh, do things like open source, etc. Okay, so what else do we need? Um, let's put a network adapter on it. And this is, again, going to a physical adapter, uh, the third Ethernet adapter in my little machine. It's just a little little 10 100 um, USB uh, Ethernet uh, adapter. So I think that's it. Let's uh, fire it up. Okay, cool. Um, so we got a new file for the non-volatile RAM. New file for our uh, our 5 gig disk. Now let's uh, let's boot the CPU. Get the the boot ROM fired up, and uh, see what's going on. Okay, cool. We have got a uh, a system here. So let's see what devices we have here. So that's too much stuff. We see here we have our. Um, our first disk controller, we've got uh, the one we want there, and then the one we're going to boot from there. So, let's boot that up. Uh, this is a little slow. Um, you know, it's not, not the fastest thing in the world, but, you know, it's probably the, the easiest and simplest way to get um, VMS running on a on a system now, right? You could also do an alpha emulator, uh, but again, there aren't there the the quality of alpha emulators out there aren't as good as SimH is. SimH, and because it's open source, there is an open source alpha emulator ES40. The work was kind of halted on, and it's sort of functional, not terribly fast, but it would be great if someone picked up that project. There are commercial emulators, so let's put in our our date here. It's the 30th of July. Uh, 2015, and what's the time? Um, 1.15 in the morning. Okay. So, uh, like I say, not the not the best performance here. Um, with a kind of tuned, compiled uh, SimH running on uh, kind of an older i7. Again, it's it's you know it's multi-threaded, but it does the other thread for housekeeping and, and I/O and stuff. So you don't get multiple CPU 
uh, performance, I get about 37 VUPs. Uh, VAX units of performance, I guess, is what the acronym stands for. Um, that's not terribly good. Like a modern titanium system is, you know, 10,000 VUPs. Um, that's the other option to do OpenVMS as a hobbyist is use the, the newer titanium or, or alpha stuff. You can get used alpha. Um, used titanium, I actually picked up a, a used uh, HP Integrity titanium system. I have some other videos about trying to get the, the noise level down on that because it's you know, it's got 60 dB fans in it. It's got six of them. It's pretty noisy. So this is going to take a moment to uh, to go and probe devices and uh, uh, see what's available here. Um, now one of the things uh, is any system, modern system, you emulate this stuff on I.O. performance is just going to blow anything, any of the older stuff out of the water. Um, so don't worry too much about the, the I.O. It's only if you get large files, you know, seek times and things may be uh, a little interesting. Um, so, yes, all the stuff's available. Now we just need to restore the save set. Um, kind of, this is kind of like copying a mini root in an old SunOS install, um, just to get enough to boot to do some additional additional stuff. So we're going to copy a mini root on, on there, and we're going to then um, use that mini root to complete the installation. Mini root's kind of, a, I guess, a Unix-y term, so whatever it's called. Um, use the backup command. Call them save sets. Again, I'm really new to OpenVMS. I'm loving it. It's uh, an operating system which was in more use. Uh, it has some really great advantages over the Unix stuff. And uh, usability isn't necessarily one of them. Security is. I mean, it's had only, I think, what, 20 something exploits in its entire history. I mean, that's pretty impressive considering it's been around since the mid 70s. So, so almost a 40 year history. So we're done. We, we've completed our backup. Let's uh, halt the emulator and uh, boot back up. So you know, flip the power switch. I'm sure I, if I found the manuals for the old uh, Vax VMS, that would be available. But now we can boot from DUA zero, so disk zero, and we're no longer reading from the CD here. Uh, so this is kind of the mini mini roots on there, and it's probably going to ask me for time and date again for some strange reason. And we'll see. Uh, okay. Hang on. 30th July 2015. It's now, I guess, what, 125, 122. See some boot messages again. You know, it, maybe it's because I've been in the Unix world for, you know, so long around Unix machines, you know, 30 years. And so that stuff makes sense to me. Or this doesn't make sense. Although this should be easier to use, and if you get involved with VMS, you'll note that the help doc the documentation system is much more e user friendly than man pages on the Unix side. Again, if you're used to Unix, man pages make sense. If you're not, you're coming into a system naively. This makes sense. You say help, whatever command menus to to bring you through it. And we'll accept the default for our uh, label and put in what our CD is. Yep, ready to be mounted. Um, yeah, I want to put the library files, optional files. Again, we have a 5 gig disk, which for VAX is pretty big. Definitely want the help database. Put it in the default. Uh, we don't want management station. So again, I don't have anything with Windows 95 or NT. So not going to help a whole lot. Yes, deck windows is, is good stuff. Uh, yes, we want fonts. 100 DPI fonts. Yeah, we'll do DeckNet Plus. Um, I I haven't had any use with DeckNet yet, um, but I may I may play around with it a little bit. Um, uh, you know, TCP/IP is what I'm using, and this comes with UCX. Although third party, what I'm currently running on my I guess production, my my main hobbyist uh, VMS image is from a third party called Process Software. They also do hobbyist licenses, and that is uh, they have two things: TCP, where, and Multinet. Uh, both excellent products. Um, now, more modern VMS has a better TCP implementation. This is pretty basic, so you get Telnet and some other basic stuff where the stuff from Process Software, you get SSH v2, things like that, which is a little slow on uh, emulated VAX. 
So this will then uh, chug along for a couple minutes. Um, but VMS was the, uh, you know, it was kind of the default or the projected OS for Vaxes. Now Vaxes had another important part to play in the evolution of Unix. Because of that virtual memory system, you know, the virtual address extension, uh, I mean, Unix really flowered on there. Uh, so things like the the BSDs were really common on on VAX, uh, and then DEC had their own Unix that would also run on a VAX Altrix, um, which they also had on the personal DEC stations. Which is, you know, in the retro computing, one of my the great tragedies is that I lost some of my old machines. I had a personal DEC station again. It was you know a MIPS, with R four thousand or something, uh, not terribly powerful, but it was a a great machine. Um, yeah, we want uh, deck windows as the default. Prompt for a few passwords here. Um, system is important. That's like root. Um, sys test and field. Um, for most purposes, you don't need them because you know if you have system, uh, those are for testing or for for field operations. Um, and for security, if you have one of these sitting out on the network, you probably want to disable those uh, accounts, disable logins from those accounts. So let's give it a a name here. Call it. Uh, screwed that up. We'll have to. May have to change the SCS node name. But this is more important for DeckNet. Let's call this 1300. Uh, this is a number between 1025 and like 65k. And uh, the installation continues. And if you see, this is uh, you know this is I guess a mid to late 90s era operating system. Pretty easy. I mean, this is a an enterprise grade operating system. If you installed say Solaris around that time, yeah, maybe it was it was that easy, but you know, it the things weren't that difficult as as maybe time remembers them being and things as unuser friendly as time remembers them being. Um you know, Unix was always just felt right to me. Um so maybe that's why I found it so easy to use. Uh we don't want any project product authorization keys. We'll do license registration in the next video. And we are in the U.S., so 33. Yeah, and we're central, so four. Yep, that's right. Oh, I must have hit something incorrect. Yeah, 33 U.S., yes, and four. I guess daylight savings in effect. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And again, we go back to the CD here, and it is ready to be mounted. Don't want to review. And this will, again, DECnet will take a, a little bit of time. A DECnet's what you can use to cluster the systems, and DECnet had an interesting addressing scheme. Um, and you can do DECnet over TCP uh, for using that, but so far I've been able to do all the network I needed with TCP. Although, setting up a mini cluster on uh, DECnet might not be too bad of an idea. I know some people have done Raspberry Pi uh, Vax cluster implementations, um, which looks pretty interesting. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do is get a good, um, you know, get a new home server, you know, x64 machine. Um, so if any of you listening have any any advice on that, you know, it has to be kind of on the inexpensive side. Um, you know, I was looking at the AMD FX series because they get eight real cores at a, a good price. Um, the performance per core might not be as much as Intel, um, but it's certainly more affordable and I'd get eight real cores. Um, whereas otherwise I'd need for the desktop range, I'd need i7, whatever they are, the 59 something. Um, but the thing I'd like to do is set up a good network uh, file system sharing from there. Uh, either iSCSI, ideal but maybe a little overblown, or just NFS to go run all the Raspberry Pis on uh, to work on the cluster. Uh, and Raspberry Pi, you know, bees are probably uh, pretty inexpensive. So now it's uh, shutting down, and uh, we'll have a complete system. So let's see. Okay, uh, shutting down. It dismounted. So yeah. So hopefully I'll get a, a chance to build a new, you know, virtualization host and you know home server to do all this stuff. Um, and one of the big expenses is putting network cards in it. You know, right now I'm just using an old laptop as a, a server here, and it, it works fine. But it is starting to show its age a little bit, being a, a i7, you know, 30 whatever it is, uh, laptop. It's not as not as powerful. Um, so any advice you guys have on on CPU selection, 
uh, would be valuable. So let's just, uh, last thing, and then I'll wrap up this video, and it's already gotten pretty long for a quick, quick video on this, so let's... Let's boot the CPU and then boot back up on our newly installed disk and then yeah, shut it right down. So, again, not the speediest thing in the world. But it looks like we can boot, uh, boot this. We get a message that um, uh, our network config isn't, isn't there because we haven't configured the DECnet stuff. Yep, we got a message that it's uh, it's been installed successfully. A lot of messages and some accounting information. So, log in as system, and we're in. Uh, so that'll kind of wrap up this video. Let's uh, shut down uh, the system here. Uh, one quick thing um, that is kind of a, a trap that I discovered is the terminal settings. Um, I found XFCE term works best for this. It has in some ways better uh, VT100 emulation than Xterm in a couple cases, although Xterm might be needed in other cases. But one of the things is it auto-detects. Um, this will auto-detect correctly as a VT100. Xterm detects as a VT220 and some issues there. So sometimes you do have to set your terminal. Uh, let's shut that down. Um, well, thanks for watching this. Um, part 2 will be coming out soon. Uh, where we'll go install um, and get the networking set up and get licenses installed. Uh, thanks for watching.